it's a uh, am i audible sir yes yes you can go ahead okay okay sir okay sir uh, very good evening to one and all it's uh, really uh, it's my privilege to welcome you all for the uh, pleasant evening webinar session on integrated farming system a uh, really the great uh, moment uh, we are having today uh, i welcome uh, our director icr nrcb and uh, in charge for uh, pme sir senior uh, colleague uh, all technician and supporting staff technical officer from uh, icr nrcb and uh, very important i my sincere and heartfelt uh, welcome to our speaker uh, dr n ravi sangar principal scientist project coordinator acr acr ifs coordination unit icr from modipro i welcome you all sir uh, my sincere welcome goes to uh, actually different participants they had uh, uh, registered here uh, this i can say this meet is a amalgamation of uh, different stakeholders for example students scientists researcher then scholars then sms Uh, scientists from KVK, ICR, KVK, especially from the Atari uh, zone, Bangalore, uh, then farmers, other stakeholders, they had registered. Near about a 950 registration we received uh, till today. So I welcome uh, all the participants, uh, students, scientists, all the participants for the great uh, webinar session. Um, Actually, we ICR NRCB we are organizing this event as a, a commemoration of the ba Bharat Ka Amrut Mahotsav program series. It's a part of that program. We are organizing uh, different series of lectures. This is one among them. Uh, we received already. I told we received near about a 900 participant registered participant. And my our humble request that. Uh, we try to accommodate all the participants. Suppose some participants may not be able to join the YouTube live stream. Also, we are uh, telecasting our program. That link YouTube live telecast uh, link is there in our chat box. You can join in the YouTube live uh, live program. Also, this is for all the participants. Kind information. Uh, with this uh, small note, uh, we are uh, we ICR NRCB. We are trying to. integrate all the stakeholders for the integrated farming system with this small note i will i invite our director icr nrcp to deliver uh, her uh, inaugural letters madam please madam uh, good uh, good evening good afternoon and good evening <laughs> uh, welcome to all the participants welcome to the uh, speaker dr ravi shankar from uh, Uh, yes, uh, and all the parties, my own colleagues and the people from uh, all parts of uh, country, and including universities and uh, uh, KVKs, it's an excellent uh, 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 par participation I have seen. Okay, this is uh, uh, while uh, celebrating our Bharat ka Amrit Mahotsav. That means commemorating our seventy fifth year of uh, Indian independence. We have ICR has planned a series of programs. and uh, each institute has uh, uh, its own uh, program schedule and today we have planned in such a way that uh, this integrated farming system how banana can be a banana based integrated farming system can uh, become a model and it can enhance the farmers income was the uh, idea that emanated in one of our discussions uh, while looking at people Uh, whom to invite uh, there were a lot of suggestions uh, and e every most of the names uh, uh, suggestions converged to the name of dr ravi shankar only uh, we are happy to have you here dr ravi shankar thank you madam welcome most welcome um, of course integrated farming system though we are eager to hear from him um, whatever little bit i looked here and there uh, i know this is uh, this has been in our history uh, we had been following and we Uh, entered a different era of uh, a commercial farming system, and then we are uh, completing the cycle, coming back to the uh, original way how we are uh, uh, doing farming, uh, using it as inclusive use of or inclusive integration of all components in the nature, uh, in the farm, in the in farming. Uh, though they say integrated farming system, it's a livestock and crop system. Uh, people say it is a, a system of systems. Uh, this is what I heard. Uh, 
many uh, advantages are there um, uh, many dimensions of uh, integrated farming systems are there where we use little input we try to derive more output and how whole family and uh, the outer circle of the family can also be benefited how employment can be generated in a holistic way how it uh, uh, also works towards the environmental safety and there in a sort of circular economy we can see within a small system here in the integrated farming system so the scope for it is uh, very very enormous uh, and because of that only probably we also insist most of the kvk uh, invariably to have a farming system research or a component in their all their research activities so all kvk have this either they have a piggery or poultry even duck and turkey uh, production all these are integrated as a component of research and the same thing has been disseminated to all the farm, uh, farming communities uh, uh, definitely i look forward to hear from uh, dr ravi shankar with the, this importance in mind i know this special webinar on ifs uh, has been arranged today i'm very happy we have a good speaker with us and in this occasion i really want to thank uh, uh, our atari director dr venkata subramanian uh, the moment we dropped, dropped an email he uh, circulated to all his uh, uh, centers kvks uh, not only uh, in and around to uh, widest circulation he has given that's why you see more than 800 uh, uh, registrations being done uh, special thanks to dr venkata subramanian sir if you are here thank you very much uh, <clears throat> and also to all the participants i am sure uh, you will have a uh, lot of information gained you will go back with enriched knowledge on ifs uh, not only of my own colleagues all the participants and all the best for this uh, now uh, back to dr karpagam thank you very yes, much madam. thank you very much madam very uh, wonderful informative and uh, small nutshell about uh, integrated farming system you have given thank you very much madam with your permission uh, just uh, before uh, inviting speaker to speak i want to introduce about uh, speaker uh, about a few two or three lines about our uh, speaker uh, actually dr ravi sangar uh, he is known for uh, farming system research uh, he is having a near almost 23 years of multidisciplinary farming system research experience uh, he served as a scientist and senior scientist for more than 20 uh, 12 years uh, at port player andaman and ecobar islands uh, that's a very good example example for the different farming system and coastal agri ecosystem in andaman and ecobar island uh, island is concerned then as a principal scientist he is working uh, at madhipuram from 2011 onwards uh, national pa of all india network program of organic farming uh, from 2013 uh, still he is having a more uh, further on his uh, uh, cap we can say um, he is a program facilitator or project coordinator of acrp ifs from 2015 completed 13 research project including 14 external fund that's a very significant to note here so published almost 100 research papers including 78 from the nas rated journal then popular article 35 and book, book chapter 52 technical bulletin and visited different countries uh, so fellow of indian society of agronomy is a different uh, organization he is involved in a different project he involved with this brief note uh, let me uh, invite our dr ravi sangar to because we can uh, speak very little we can hear uh, more from our speaker dr ravi sangar uh, i invite dr n ravi sangar principal scientist to deliver uh, his lecture please sir thank you thank you dr karbaham um, hope i am audible yes yes sir yes sir yes, yes. Uh, thank you uh, respected uh, dr s uma director icr uh, nrc banana Uh, dr r selvarajan karpaham dr karpaham conveners of this uh, program and all the scientists from nrc banana and also the uh, kvk personnel and uh, dr venkata subramaniam uh, director atari bangalore and all the other pa participants who have joined for this program uh, once again uh, very good evening to all of you and uh, i welcome all uh, all of you on behalf of our institute also because our institute is also a icr institute and we are also part of this uh, celebration of this 75th year of india's independence 
and i would like to place on record my sincere thanks to the director icr nrc banana and also conveners of this uh, uh, program for giving the opportunity to our institute to present the some of the integrated farming system models which we have developed over the last 10 years before these uh, participants certainly uh, i hope that the, whatever the information which i am going to share Uh, it will be helpful for all of you and it can be taken to the farmers field for the benefit of the ensuring the uh, raising the income of the farmers just i would like to share the presentation yeah uh, presentation is visible dr karpagam yes 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 very okay. much okay okay very much so, very much so the topic of uh, today's uh, speech is uh, sustainable integrated cropping and farming system models with a special reference to the banana for enhancing the income of the farmers so i have uh, arranged the my uh, talk focusing on mainly focusing on the banana based integrated farming system or the banana as a module in a particular integrated farming system so this is the way i am going to cover and uh, before just moving to the uh, specific topic of banana based integrated farming system i would like to just very briefly take 5 minutes to explain about the activities undertaken by our institute and what is integrated farming system and how we are going ahead with the development of design and development of the integrated farming system followed by the uh, banana based integrated farming system then uh, module of uh, banana in uh, ifs and also the farmers field experience also would i, I would like to share uh, during uh, the course of my presentation our institute uh, the history can be traced back from 1952 it was started as a simple fertilizer trial and it has grown to the institute of uh, indian institute of farming system research in the year 2014 and we are operating two national level schemes uh, almost covering 26 states uh, one scheme is on acrp on integrated farming system another one is the all india network program on organic farming i want the our research teams uh, mainly the team three teams one is integrated farming system second is the cropping systems and resource management and third is we are working exclusively working on the organic agriculture systems and recently icr also gave the mandate of working on the natural farming which is being talked uh, in much way much bigger way in the recent time at the grassroots level as well as at the policy makers level so this is the four areas on which the, our institute is working and if you look at the integrated farming system as director nrc banana pointed out this is not a new system our forefathers have practiced it in a systematic way but due to the development and also the requirement for the country most of our production system has moved to the single commodity production system or the cereal cereal intensive farming uh, farming systems so that has resulted into the uh, uh, decline in the factor productivity decline in the soil health and there are several other uh, second generation issues so fao if you talk to about the integrated farming system food and agricultural organization they have classified the integrated farming system into the two different categories one is the natural system the second one is the intensive integrated farming systems so the first one they, that is the natural farming system which was practiced by our forefathers earlier that is called as the natural farming system which is mainly of the mixed in nature there is no uh, there is no linkage among the components there is no proper linkage among the components and they are called as they, they are known as the natural farming system and the output or output from those traditional uh, natural systems are very low whereas the second category of the integrated farming system classified by the fao is the intensive integrated farming system wherein it is clearly stated that it is a judicious mix of two or more components using the principles of minimum competition and maximum complementarity once you apply these two principles minimum com competition and maximum complementarity then only it can be con called as the integrated farming system or the intensive integrated farming system and those systems should also should also involve the all the advanced agronomic management tools 
such as conservation agriculture you have to uh, integrate with the system you have to integrate the precision farming system and all type of advanced technologies needs to be integrated into the intensive integrated farming system and with mainly for the increase enhancing the income in a environment friendly way so this is what the fao has clearly indicated that once we call a particular system as a integrated farming system it should meet all these principles or the criteria then the most important point is that the may why we are going for the integrated farming system we have to maintain our biodiversity to sustain the our future generation and also the diversification of the existing system so these are all the certain basic uh, requirement which is for required for the successful practice of the integrated farming system uh, if you see uh, there is a target of uh, at the global level to achieve the sustainable development goals there are 17 sustainable development goals to be achieved in 2030 and if you see analyze a integrated farming system a properly designed integrated farming system can address a yeah, almost 13 sustainable development goals in a integrated way including the no poverty zero hunger which i will uh, explain little later and also uh, life below water life above ground all these um, uh, sustainable development goals can, can be 13 sdgs can be addressed in the through the integrated farming systems and we are talking about the sustainable income for the farmers or the sustainable livelihood when you once you talk about the sustainable livelihood or the sustainable income for the farmers we should address the globally it is agreed that we should address this particular issue in a multiple angles mainly the four angles one is the we need to increase the income of the farmers sustainably sustainably means even during the weather vagaries period during the drought period there should be there should not be a huge loss or the significant loss in terms of the income the second is the we should also reduce the expenditure expenditure means uh, nowadays the agriculture is mostly the marketized all the money of the inputs farmers are depending on the markets depending on the markets for purchase starting from the nutrient pesticides or whatever you call it as the inputs even for the seedlings or the seeds saplings they are depending on the market so here uh, the another aim is to should be the reduction in the expenditure by way of reducing the market inputs third one is the we have to increase the self employment yes employment that should also be a self employment it should also be a decent employment means through the employment they should get a good amount of income to the for their social needs and the fourth one is the most important point in the current scenario of climate change is the reduction in risk so the reduction in risk risk happens due to the market price fluctuation risk also happens due to the weather factors climatic factors and banana is more uh, vulnerable to this risk especially during the cyclone period or heavy wind velocity period or during the flood period drought period all those things so when we have seen 10 years back or 15 years back we have seen a very less number of flood or very less number of drought or very less number of increased wind velocity but in the recent time if you watch the tv channels there are frequent uh, news the crop loss occurred due to the heavy wind crop loss occurred due to the this one flood or the drought so there are several this one so we need to address this particular issue of reducing the risk due to the market price fluctuation and also the climate or the uh, weather related risks also so once we address all these issues in a integrated way then only we can achieve the sustainable livelihood or the sustainable income for the farmers so this can be possible through the integrated farming systems the integrated farming system a properly designed and developed tested integrated farming systems can provide all these four things and it can ensure the sustainable livelihood and income for the farmers i would like to just inform you that uh, under our acrp ifs program and also by involving many of the icr institutes and saius we have uh, designed developed and tested and validated the prototype ifs models the 60 prototype ifs models suitable for the 26 states and union territories and many of our models many of our models are having a banana as a important component into the our integrated farming systems all these models are developed for the research extension education 
as well as a business model for attracting the rural youth. So based on the results of these our models, we have developed a 31 bankable projects also based on this. Those models are already shared with the NABARD for upscaling through the NABARD uh, uh, financial package. And NABARD is also in the process of preparing a whole financing package for the integrated farming systems. So with this, uh, just before going to the banana based models or banana as a module in IFS models, how these models are performing in terms of uh, income, net income to the farmers. We analyzed across the different uh, regions, like uh, we have taken northern, eastern, southern, and also the western regions. Uh, and we have compared our income because these models are almost uh, seven to eight years old models. And we compared the income obtained from our models with the top that DFI estimated committee, that is uh, doubling farmers income uh, estimated income from the uh, this one. So what we found that these models are having the potential to in improve the income of the farmers by three to five times across the different regions. If you take the northern region, the 3.6 times improvement is possible through this integrated farming system. But in case of eastern region, as already the income is low, the productivity of the crops are low. Once we go for this type of um, integrated farming system, especially in the eastern region, comprising of Orissa, West Bengal, Assam, the potential improvement is there up to 4.9 times it is there, it is possible. And in case of Western region, we found 3.6 times improvement. We have compared with the state-wise income reported by the DFI, uh, DFI committee and we compared with the our models. And in case of Southern region also, by adopting or promoting this type of integrated farming system models, 3.5 times improvement in the income is net income is possible apart from the all the other benefits uh, which are happening due to the uh, integrated farming system promotion of the integrated farming systems just i would like to go to the topic with the special reference to we have developed a lot of models many of our models are having the banana as a component or banana based ifs models and uh, I would, uh, for want of time, I would like to take you, all of you, to the four corners of the country. One is the southern region, eastern region, western region, and also the northern region. How these banana-based IFS models are performing. Uh, in case of Kerala, we have developed a banana-based IFS models uh, in at Karmana, one of our centuries there. This model is still there in our uh, KAU station, our uh, IACRP IFS station wherein we went for a 51% of the area allocation for the banana based banana based cropping systems, which includes the banana crop, uh, mainly the Nandran and Nejali Puvan uh, varieties were uh, integrated into the system. Along with the banana, the other crops like pineapple, papaya, vegetables, all kind of vegetables are taken as a intercrop in the banana, like okra, chili, amaranthus, bitter gourd, all the details are given, variety details, everything is given. And also the tuber cross, which is more essential for the uh, diet of the Kerala, Kerala people. So we have also integrated the tuber crops. And also along with these uh, fruits, vegetables, and also the tubers, we have also integrated the fish component also along with this. Uh, the fish component of pearl spot and also the genetically improved fish tilapia. This was integrated into this particular model. You can see the photograph wherein the banana crop along with the vegetables, tubers, fish, everything is there. So this particular model was established, designed, tested and validated along with the farmer's bill. And here the main important thing is that the each component is having the input from the other component. And also each component is giving the output to the farm family. So this way the integration is happening. Suppose, for example, banana pseudostum, which is coming from the 0.2 hectare of banana, it is around 2.4 tons. And also the other residues are used in the vermicompost. And then vermicompost is again applied back to the crops or the cropping systems. Similarly, the fish pond, the whatever the fish component is there, wherein the silt is there, fish silt is there, that silt is recycled to the this crop component. So similar way, this type of models, which, which we have established for the Kerala state, this gives almost saves around 50,000 rupees through the recycling. With, through the recycling of the waste of one component to the other component, 
by this way itself we can save around 50000 rupees as a reduction in the cost of cultivation of from the 0.2 hectare and what we observed is that this 0.2 hectare model which we have developed which is a banana vegetable tubers and also the fish based system cattle this can give a net income of almost 1.98 lakhs from the 0.2 hectare a small area whereas if the sole banana crop is taken with all kind of risk associated with the sole banana crop they could farmers could able to realize the net income of only 0.26 Uh, 26000 from the 0.2 hectare area and we also analyzed how this the sustainability of this particular model over a period of 5 years and what we found is that the sustainability index the sustainable value index is ranging from the uh, it is ranged from the 0.5 to 0.8 or with a mean of 0.65 so that means uh, out of 10 years 6 to 7 years this much of income is assured from this particular farming systems so this way the whatever the model which we are promoting or which we have developed it is more sustainable in terms of providing the income to the farmers and we also analyzed the soil health and also the greenhouse gas emission which is more important in the recent times we are talking very uh, frequently about the climate change we are emitting more amount of uh, methane and also the nitrous oxide from the agriculture especially from the livestock component so this type of integrated farming system what we found is that the net emission is also negative because the sink is more in this particular type of systems having the perennial components like banana and also the other boundary plantations the sink is more than the source so the, the model is net emission negative so if the net emission is negative that means what we can do is we can still go for a some kind of a commercial activities like we may increase the number of animals we may increase the Uh, the anaerobic uh, cultivation of the paddy or the banana crop and all the other the other interventions which we can make and the, the, in this uh, in this system the additional important point which we have observed is that if you go for a sole crop of banana you will get your soil properties may get affected due to the more and more use of only chemical fertilizers so that means your only soil chemical properties gets changed and all your uh, physical and biological properties of the soil gets affected and that again affects your income in a long term so this type of systems if you see the data here it is having a very good physical property chemical properties and also the microbial populations which is very critical for the making the nutrient available from the soil so this type of enzymatic activity all all these three properties of the soil which is very base for the sustainable for ensuring the sustainability gets improved through this type of integrated farming systems so this is uh, from this particular model banana con uh, banana component which is uh, done in the 0.2 hectare contributes around 29% of the net income of the farmers and 30% is coming from the cattle and the banana wastes are fed to the animals and also be used as a compost all those type of integrations are made as indicated in the previous slide and this is the next model which we have developed for tamil nadu especially for the coastal areas coastal areas of tamil nadu this particular model is developed at the uh, somri tanjavur that is soil and water management research institute kattu totta tanjavur uh, where in 0.8 hectare of model uh, 0.8 hectare of ifs model was developed in this the horticulture component is taken in the 0.1 hectare area mainly comprising of the banana based cropping systems having the different kind of varieties the different pu and mondan all kind of varieties are around 220 plants are integrated into this uh, particular model uh, the this is a, the earlier one was banana based ifs model but here we are treating a banana as a one of the important module in the integrated farming system important component in the integrated farming systems and if you see here also the banana whatever the wastes are there whatever the leaf or whatever the flowers whatever the waste fruits because after marketing farmers are facing around 10 to 10% or 5 to 10% of the fruits gets lost which is not marketable those fruits can be very easily utilized for the livestock it can be utilized for the um, poultry it can also be utilized for the other purposes compost making all those things so those type of recycling 
helps the farmers to enhance their income that means the banana direct marketing is the one way of getting the income another is the through the indirect way of also we can get the income and here in this particular model we have uh, recycled uh, almost 135 kg of flowers the 1.3 tons of fruits dried leaves and also the pseudo stems all these are recycled into the compost pit or to the market and also to the animal component here again if you see here the total cost that out of total cost the banana module has recycled around 23% of the waste if you have we have recycled almost 74 tons of waste from waste of other components as a input to the other components here 23% of the waste is shared from the banana module alone because the lot of weight is there coming from the pseudo stem and also the other waste and if you see the income share the horticulture component the mainly the banana based system is contributing five percent from for the total income of the farmers and we have developed a one greenhouse gas estimation tool excel based tool by using the ipcc coefficient ipcc tire 2 coefficient and just you have to feed the value into the excel sheet it will give you a total emission and also the total sink and whether your model, your integrated farming system model is eco-friendly or climate friendly. And if you see here, the in agriculture, the major emission is coming from the livestock component. It is well known fact, every one of us know. And we cannot avoid the rearing of the uh, livestock because it is emitting more. We cannot avoid the rearing of the livestock. We have to keep the livestock for the many purposes for meeting of all our requirements. So in order to neutralize, neutralize those emissions from the livestock, this type of integrated farming system models by having the long gestation crops and also the agroforestry in the boundary plantation. So as a boundary plantations and also the recycling of biomass, whatever the biomass is there, which we are recycling through that way, we can make a system as a carbon neutral or the emission neutral system, even a emission negative system also. Here in this case, the banana crop along with the intercrop vegetables, they contribute, they contribute lesser uh, emission of carbon dioxide equivalent than the other crops which are grown like rice crops which are grown in the summer. Even we analyzed where the emission is more. When the banana farmers, they go for an anaerobic practice of flooding the field. So that time the emission of carbon dioxide from the banana field is higher than the, the well-managed field, well-managed banana field. So this type of the system ensures that the, within, the, within the farm boundary, the emissions are neutralized. The higher emissions from the livestock is neutralized through this integrated farming system interventions. The another model which we have developed especially for the coastal areas of Andhra Pradesh, West Goda, this model is there in West Godavari district, wherein the banana crop is integrated with the intercropping of seasonal vegetables and also the floriculture. Floriculture component is also included apart from the all the other components. Through uh, this is this particular model is established for the 0.6 hectare area having the crop component, dairy component, fishery component, and also poultry component, apart from that banana component also. So this type of models, which not only gives the higher returns, it also ensures the food and nutritional security for the farmers or the farm households in the, uh, in the local areas or also for the local households in the villages. How? Because you, over the years, the consumption pattern in India is changing from the grains to the grams and greens and more fruits are being taken by the farmers or, uh, or for, for the consumers. Demand is there for the multiple commodities. So this type of multiple commodities based integrated farming system helps for supply for ensuring the supply of multiple commodities at the local level. If you see during the lockdown, lockdown period or during the pandemic period, lot of farmers lot of farmers or the lot of consumers they were have affected due to the affecting in the supply chain way the farmers they have the production but they are not able to sell whereas the consumer they want a different kind of products 
they they are not able to get because the, our supply chain is completely affected so during this type of pandemic period also we analyzed what is the situation where the ifs farmers are there since they are having the multiple commodities they are loss in the loss in terms of fruits or loss in terms of the non marketable produce is very less compared to those farmers who are solely depend on yeah, one crop or one commodity crop and similarly the from the consumers point of view also wherever this type of farming system clusters were there they were able to meet their uh, fruit milk uh, the vegetables all type of commodities at the local level itself so this is during the uh, this type of pandemic period also this ifs systems makes the farmers and also the consumers resilient to this type of pandemic then here if you see in this particular model uh, we have integrated banana with the vegetables such as tomato uh, intercropped with the vegetables like tomato bendy uh, brinjal gourds uh, this uh, cluster bean chilies and also the leafy vegetables and the flower crops such as marigold chrysanthemum and prosandra and uh, the important point here is that the tella chakrakali and also the karpura chakravali Uh, Kelly, these two are the most popular uh, available uh, in the those areas, which are integrated into the our farming system model. And in this particular model, if you see this particular photograph, this banana crop is used as a alley. Means from the both the sides, these banana plants are grown, and in between the crops are grown, vegetables or uh, this uh, floriculture flower crops. all these type of crops are integrated into the system and apart from that apart from that the banana is also integrated into a pond system in the in this particular pond all the four corners of the this pond is planted with the banana which is serving in a three which is uh, with a four three or four main purposes one is the during the summer time summer time what happens uh, the temperature goes then fish component gets affected this the survivability of the fish component gets affected so during that time farmers uh, what used to do or what we have done in the ifs model is that the dried leaves of the banana is removed from the plants and then they are put on the above the water in order to reduce the temperature and also provide the some kind of a cooling to the fishes and the pseudo stem the pseudo stem of this banana plants are chopped into and then they are put into the ponds and that acts as a it decomposes and it leads to the development of the phytoplanktons and also the zooplanktons in the plant and that way the fish growth is also enhanced through this particular type of uh, farming systems and moreover the small chopped uh, materials of the banana pseudo stem also acts as a feed for the duck which which all that also we have uh, Uh, we have observed even if you chop the banana pseudo stem and mix it with the regular feed of the regular feed of the duck and put it into the water the duck also takes into the this one the water which is there in the pseudo stem is useful for the uh, poultry birds and also the ducks and supplying the more amount of potassium to the birds so this way we have studied and here you can see this particular model is having the poultry component all these uh, native breeds of poultry component kadaknath and asil is integrated into this system and the fish component it is mostly the katla and rohu mainly the banana wastes are utilized by the grass carp it is directly consumed by the grass carp grass carp for their growth also and also the, the the native breeds of the cow is also maintained so here red gram is intercropped with the uh, banana as a alley this is a, one of the major uh, activity which we have done in this particular model which is helping to supply the year round income for the farmers year round income for the farmers and in this from this point 6 sector area from the point 6 sector area from the third year onwards the farmers can very easily obtain the 1.5 lakhs income 1.5 lakhs income uh, from the point 6 sector of area through this type of multiple commodity and the bananas the share of banana is around 29 30000 rupees particular model although the area is not much banana is grown as a module in a particular uh, model all around the all around the pond and also in some area as a alle crop still this has contributed 30000 rupees towards the total net income around 15 uh, to 20000 rupees ensure assured income is there for the farmers from this type of uh, farming system models 
then uh, we also analyze the recycling and also the uh, again the greenhouse gas emission from this model this particular model is also also uh, it is a negative model emission negative or the carbon neutral model environment friendliness is there and here if you see here uh, the over a period of 3 years this particular model was made into a completely organic model that means no, no use of any fertilizer pesticide or anything from the outside over the period of time due to the recycling and also the other component management practices here if you see pesticide insecticide and herbicide use is zero in this particular model you, you can see in this particular model and by this this particular model is also acting as the organic farming system model integrated organic farming system model and 91% uh, is the uh, in the total income the banana um, module which is integrated into the system contributes around 9% of to the total income of the farming systems so here also again banana acts as a major uh, component uh, using the main product for the market and also the by products for the as a input for the other component of the uh, other component of the integrated farming systems and this is the another model which we have developed uh, for the karnataka state i'm just concentrating on the southern state after this i will move to the next state uh, the, if you see the karnataka state uh, this is the model involving the banana in a multi storied cropping system you banana is very good crop or very highly amenable for the multi storied cropping and under the uh, arecanet coconut plantations and also in the other uh, plantation crops here in this particular model apart from the regular cropping of rice rice we introduced the coconut plus arecanet plus banana as a intercropping in a multi tier system then banana sole crop was also there allotted some area and that banana plus drumstick was also tested in this particular model and apart from that we have included all other components like dairy the nasola and all other uh, sheep unit sheep all those components were also integrated into this particular system in this one and uh, this is a very complex diagram i would like to just tell you in a very uh, one or two sentences this particular model gives around 2 lakhs rupees income for the farmers and it ranges from the 1.5 to 3 lakhs rupees depending upon the number of modules or the number of components which are integrated here if you see the each component is having a input from the other component and the other component is uh, ha also having the output from the which can go to the farm household so this way the everything is estimated and every component is interlinked that is the one of the important uh, criteria which which we should follow in the integrated farming systems and this particular model we have ensured the maximum complementarity that is why we are able to link all the components each component to the other component otherwise if you have a, uh, if you are not planning it properly then you cannot link all the components to the uh, for using a, a output of one component to the input of the other component so this way we have to plan it very carefully then only we can be uh, prepare a sustainable farming systems or the cropping system models which can give a sustainable livelihood for the farmers and in this particular model uh, this sarikanet based uh, integrated farming system model or the banana multi banana based multi tier integrated farming system model if you see the total requirement of the nutrient is around almost 514 kg of nitrogen 264 kg of phosphorus and 421 kg of potassium and through the nu nutrient added through the green manures or the intercropping recycling and also the uh, it, it will alone save around uh, around 88%, 88% of the nitrogen requirement for the system. Only 14% are required from the outside the system. So there is a huge saving in the cost. Similarly, in case of phosphorus, if you take almost 89, 87% of, of the nutrients phosphorus required can be met within the system if it is properly, properly linked and properly designed since banana crop is having the more amount of potassium banana component contributes for the more saving in the potassium in the form of your recycling it's almost uh, 55 percent of the potassium can be recycled through this type of integrations 
and we also analyze the uh, microbial properties of the soil compared to the rice rice predominant system in those regions the banana based cropping systems multi tier cropping systems are having the better soil microbial diversity than the uh, this your rice rice cropping systems or the field crop based cropping systems in this particular model and what we found that there is a water saving also the predominant cropping systems in those region in those region of uh, karnataka is rice rice cropping system it is almost consumes 24000 meter cube of water whereas this we have estimated this type of diversified cropping systems along with the farming systems due to the inbuilt recycling capacity the water saving can be up to 63% this requires a less amount of uh, water compared to the existing predominant system practiced by the farmers in those uh, regions in those karnataka regions so uh with the, this is about the southern states where the banana crop is more popular and more uh, uh, more more it is cultivated in a scientific way and most of the farmers they go for a integrated system but few farmers and many of the farmers they maintain a sole crop and again it is affected with the natural calamities so for those farmers if they adopt this type of integrated farming systems they are sure to get the sustainable income they can meet all their nutritional requirement of the soil human as well as the livestock also and this is the particular model uh, yeah, banana module which was uh, developed for the assam conditions this one one hectare of the ifs model and wherein the banana is not as a introduced as a not as a major component or the major module here it is introduced as a boundary plantation it is a very good crop for a multi tier based boundary plantations and especially here we have introduced the three crops in a boundaries boundaries of the fish pond and also the all the fields one for the first tier is the arecanet second is the banana and the third is the uh, fodder crop which is required for the animal kambun apiar hybrid so this type of boundary plantations with a multiple uh, multi tier system can not only sustain the improve improve the income of the farmers it also contributes for the better uh, management of the resources with available especially the land resources the land is the major constraint especially for the small and marginal farmers if they plan it like situation in this way then they can very easily utilize the uh, land effectively and also en enhance the income for the uh, farmers and the, here also if you see the each component the each by product of the banana is utilized for the many purposes like uh, raw material of the banana pseudo stem is used for the composting uh, very good quality of farmer manure can be may, may pre prepared by mixing it with the banana pseudo stem having the higher potassium content and the banana leaf is utilized especially for the fish feed especially for the grass carp and also the cattle feed and also the they are also making plates in the northeastern region and also the uh, local snacks also like it is prepared from the banana leaf and the banana flowers also it is used as a vegetables in the northeastern region and in some parts of the southern region also and also the it is a major family nutrition component in the farming system then here also we observed the better soil health when we go for the integrated farming system the carbon source sink relationship indicates that there is a negative emission from this type of models and around 2% even though the banana is uh, planted only in the boundaries still it contributes for the 2% to 2.64% to the total net income of the uh, direct net income to the uh, farmers and the, the this is the particular model for the western region which i would like to highlight developed at junagadh Uh, wherein the fruit model multi storied uh, horticulture involving the different fruit crops were adopted here uh, in this also the banana component is almost contributing 5% of the income to the uh, total ifs model and playing a very vital role in recycling of the residues and also the increasing the income of the other components and reducing the expenditure of the other components so this is the recycling and also the all the and there is a additional employment also happens due to the integration of the banana which we observed around 5% of the additional employment is uh, happening due to this type of uh, integration of the banana mainly on account of the utilization of those residues of from the bunches pseudo stem and also the processing of those waste materials from these models 
and this is the model which we have developed at our own institute which we our own institute 0.7 hectare model uh, where in uh, this is a sugar cane dominant system so this is the western plain zone of uttar pradesh is known for the sugar cane bowl and here we have introduced the banana as a one of the module important module and it was very much liked by the farmers the growth of the plants are very good even we have not uh, the, we thought the, we never thought that this might this much good crop of banana we will get it uh, in fact i have brought this uh, suckers from uh, tamil nadu where, when i my uh, when i visited uh, when i came to my native place and from my native place i brought these suckers from uh, from here and we planted and we introduced and we got a very good uh, result from this and here intercropped with this banana crop is intercropped with the vegetable pea and also the soybean crop also and we could able to small area we could able to get a good amount of uh, income from the uh, banana and what we we done is that we measured since uh, this banana crop grows very well and also inside climatic conditions are more favorable for the introduction of the new components of the farming system so we observed the diurnal variation in the temperature carbon dioxide and also the relative humidity within the banana plantation and what we found that this was more favorable for introduction of the doing of the additional activities so what we did was that we integrated the vermicompost we started preparing the vermicompost within the banana plantation and also the mushroom component we have tested the mushroom growing of the mushroom within the banana plantation how it is possible whether this banana leaf can be utilized as a utilized for the banana uh banana this uh, mushroom production so we evaluated three kind of a substrate like a rice straw mustard straw and banana leaves and we found that the banana uh, leaf can also be used as a alternate substrate for the production of the pleurotus uh, florida mushroom so this is again a, gives the opportunity for the additional income within the within the uh, farmer uh, within the banana plantation or the banana module so this way we are intensifying these uh, banana based modules in the integrated farming systems and uh, here again uh, yeah, i have already uh, highlighted this type of things uh, in the other models similar to the other models here also if you see we have estimated that out of the total recycling in terms of nutrients the banana component alone contributes almost 6% to the total nitrogen requirement of the system due to the recycling of waste of the banana component which is grown in a small area and then 4% of the phosphorus and in terms of potassium it is coming 17% 17% of the potassium requirement for the system can be met through this type of a uh, integrated farming systems involving the banana component then Uh, what we thought because if you see the integrated farming systems or the monocrop of banana there is a two different things are there one thing is that in the sole banana you have a marketable surplus so any buyer will come and they will take all your produces but in case of integrated farming systems what happens there is a diversity of the crops so the marketable uh, produce which is available for sale will be less so farmers they may save face some time to sell those uh, marker inputs or uh, the fruits directly to the vendors so in those cases what we did was that what we analyzed uh, across the different regions was that the aggregation and also the value addition this plays a critical role in enhancing the farmers income especially uh, those where the fruit crops are involved what we did, did was that we demonstrated a model involving a weber model where in in a villages where in um, there is no uh, like if you take a weber he is not a owner of your taxi or he is not a uh, this uh, consumer so we just created a youth where in we connected the available uh, ifs clusters along with the consumers so this way we could able to mobilize the farmers for their higher uh, price through the value addition at our own institute we have prepared this uh, five uh, products from the, our banana module which we have integrated in our farming system this uh, di- among the different uh, uh, different uh, value added products we found that the banana jam is having the income higher income improvement due to the processing compared to the other uh, type of products 
based on the cost and also the based on the requirement and all those things and the next is the banana sauce our one more, one of our food technology scientists is there he is involved in this particular project and he has developed all these products at our institute from the banana uh, module of this particular uh, farming system and uh, the important point is why we went for a um, this type of value addition or the aggregation is that due to the low availability of uh, produce the farmers may face sometimes the sale of this one because uh, the buyer may not come to the field so that time and also it also adds a lot of income to the once you go for a small scale value addition they it adds a lot of income to the farmers lot of additional income so uh, the banana what after our analysis the banana is not only directly contributing to the income of the farmers indirect way also it contributes significantly to the income of the ifs farmers indirect way how it is contributing is that it reduces the cost of other components and also it acts as a catalyzing um, uh, catalyzing uh, input for the improving the soil health especially the potassium which is again a major concern in the soil health potassium is very much essential and this is the our model uh, just uh, google map we have done it this is a particular model having the uh, boundary plantations kinno this uh, three cropping systems suitable uh, mainly for the meeting the household level food and nutritional security then papaya and banana and also potato and in case of banana if you see the soil health there is no because once before initiating our model the our soil health was very low means uh, so low organic carbon nitrogen and potassium if you see here all these parameters over a period of 3 or 4 years the soil carbon has reached to the medium level nitrogen phosphorus potassium all kind of things it is either in medium or higher level so in order to sustain the income of the farmers or in order to sustain the production of the any system the soil health is very important and through the integrated farming system the soil health can also be ensured this is what we want to highlight and in this our model uh, the income the total net income is uh, around uh, the banana component is contributing almost 4% directly directly to the integrated farming system if we analyze the all the other component indirect contribution also the total income uh, contributed by the banana component works out to around 20% 15 to 20% it works out to so uh, just i have uh, worked at andaman would like to also highlight some of the banana based plant uh, cropping systems or banana uh, cropping systems involving the banana it is a very common practice in the andaman nicobar islands where in the and this uh, arikanet plantation sole arikanet plantations are there these plantations are very much suitable for the introduction of that uh, banana and farmers are also practicing also with the even in a coconut plantation also these banana crops are introduced into uh, in the andaman nicobar islands and farmers are getting a good amount of uh, profit from this type of cropping system and this particular photograph is from the kolapur region of maharashtra this is from the kolapur region of maharashtra Uh, wherein i have visited uh, the farmer as a part of a one of the government of india constituted committee uh, this particular farmer was maintaining the banana plus soya bean under natural farming under natural farming means uh, it is the application of the jiva mert ganjiva mert all those kind of inputs and also the application less application no use of any fertilizers or no use of any this one the farmer was uh, mentioning that he, he has not used any kind of inputs during the last 3 4 years but initially during the 4 5 years he was maintaining the he was a organic farmer so th this type of cropping system is also practiced by the farmers wherein the soybean crop of course the crop growth of soybean is not good because due to the heavy rainfall or the water logging but the banana crop which uh, growth i have seen that uh, the farmer was telling that he is doing under natural farming i found that the banana crop growth was found to be good at this stage and uh, we are not only the high cost or the prototype ifs models we also developed a uh, small uh, low cost ifs models uh, we, along with the participation of the farmers uh, due to the time shortage i would like to just to highlight only the one model wherein we have made this interventions crc in kerala uh, this particular work was done in uh, patinam tata district involving the 11 households the farmers were having the fallow rice and also the coconut nutmeg and carcinia 
and uh, the all traditional way of doing we have introduced the low cost interventions changing of the varieties improved management practices and also the intercropping of banana uh, in the coconut plantations with the additional cost of we have just supplied the suckers and also a uh, uh, little bit quantity of fertilizers and all the soil amendment and all those things with the additional cost of 11000 rupees and likewise similarly livestock processing optional module we have done a changes a scientific changes in interventions management practices the additional cost of intervention was worked out to be only 28000 rupees you can just simply the way science has developed the technologies if we apply everything in a integrated way the additional cost comes to only 28000 rupees the earlier that is benchmark income the farmer was getting only 1.24 lakhs of income from his area uh, this is average of 11 farm households and these are all the just uh, intervention scientific interventions which we may had in a integrated way change of varieties introduction of banana uh, napier grass for the livestock uh, in the coconut plantation azola for the uh, green manuring and also azola for the poultry feed livestock feed Uh, and also the cow mat and then this type of rooftop gardening compost preparation then carcinia pre uh, preparation processing and also the uh, this mineral mixture supplementation to the cattle this is a low cost intervention and you can see the income improvement it is almost three times improvement over the benchmark income of 1.24 lakhs from a 1.18 hectare so this is what the uh, what we observed is the during the first year second year and in the four, third year first three years we have supplied the inputs and fourth year we have not given any inputs we have simply studied whether farmer is continuing or he is discontinuing the, our practices so during our impact period analysis without any inputs also we found that there is a improvement in income mainly on account of farmers their own innovative practices which are integrated into the our introduced system so what here i would like to highlight is that whatever the scientific management practices which we have developed as a banana institute or as a other institutes if we do it if we implement it in the integrated way or a integrated farming system mode the benefits accrued to the farmers will be multiple in terms of income or in terms of a, a soil health or in terms of environment and also the other benefits sustainability everything and uh, uh, this is the final slide uh, before my conclusion uh, uh, with the collaboration of nrc banana uh, I, I, we have initiated a preparing the crop plan for the entire country we have identified 15 crops for this particular crop plan work and banana is also one of the crop and based on the inputs received from the dr kumar uh, from your institute Uh, we are uh, doing this particular analysis by using a uh, three indices one is the soil climate suitability index relative yield index relative spread index and also the futuristic scenario of change in the climate so all these four parameters are included based on this the banana area is identified the, as categorized into three groups what is the highly potential areas we have estimated the area under uh, highly potential for the different states and moderately potential and marginally potential means those areas where this crop needs to be replaced or these to be intercropped or these to be rotated with the other crops so this way also we are uh, working in collaboration with your institute also so in order to just conclude my presentation uh, the integrated cropping or farming systems it's it is a holistic approach and recently if you see people are talking about the one health you must have heard many of you our scientists must have uh, heard about the one health one health is nothing about soil plant livestock human environment and planet health maintaining this as a one system and maintaining all the helps all the health of this entire system in a holistic way so ifs ensures the one health Uh, i have presented the data of environment data of soil health and also the other food and nutritional security for the family also and people are talking about the regenerative agricultural principles especially for restoring the soil uh, soil uh, sustainability so this also addresses the regenerative agriculture this has the inbuilt mechanism of maintaining the soil health then we are commemorating the 75th years of india's independence 
and mahatma gandhi ji he proposed this type of a uh, intercropping systems especially he considered this type of system as a natural insurance to the calamities he documented this uh, at his earlier years itself so if you see here although the fasal bima yojana lot of things are there but then the farmers are not easily they are not able to access to those schemes or get the benefits of those insurance but this type of integrated farming system acts as a natural insurance against the weather climate related risks then we have a biodiversity conservation utilization mechanism inbuilt within the model be it a plant diversity be it a animal diversity then round the year income is possible uh, for want of time i have not shown that uh, particular graph in month wise how much income the farmers can um, take sustainability index i have told it is ranging from 0.6 to even some of the models are having the 0.95 also then decent employment self employment then we based on the models we have developed a 31 bankable projects which acts as like a banana based this uh, business models also so those type of models offers hope for the retaining the rural youth and household level food and nutritional security can be ensured through this type of this one uh, because balanced diet which we are talking carbohydrate protein fat everything is available within the farm and the farmers family they can get all those things and 13 uh, sustainable development goals are directly addressed as a individual prototype model and if these models are implemented in a landscape level landscape level then the, the remaining four also can be addressed so all the 17 sdgs can be addressed through by uh, uh, through a well developed or well designed and tested integrated farming system models and banana as a way forward it is a, as i have highlighted in across the all the region southern region western region eastern region northern region also i have presented a data it fits very well in the integrated cropping and farming systems only push required is the that we need to develop a management practices which are specific to a particular farming systems uh, maybe a spacing or the other uh, kind of a management practices then we need to develop a uh, farming systems having a value chain based uh, this one so because uh, the marketable produce which are available is limited due to the diversification so value chain based farming systems needs to be promoted for the successful of the integrated farming system and some of the non traditional areas and also the low productive sugarcane belts like in western uttar pradesh uh, even government is also thinking to reduce the sugarcane area under the sugarcane so this type of uh, interventions can further enhance the uh availability of the fun of banana and also the it can very well fit into the farming system across the different parts of the country and just to conclude uh, that banana crop is, is a wonderful crop giving a uh, employment for the millions of the people even if you go to the streets many people are selling the banana their livelihood depends on the banana crop so it fits very well into the farming system and we need to further refine and develop the banana based farming systems for the different regions of the uh, country so with this i thank uh, i would like to acknowledge before that i would like to acknowledge all our acrp ifs centers uh, from karmana kattalgere tanjavur all the uh, jorhat junagadh and modibram all those scientists who have provided the input for my presentation for preparing this uh, presentation and i am also thankful to the director uh, nrc banana and also the organizers for providing this opportunity to deliver a talk on uh, on the occasion of 75th year of india's independence thank you thank you Mm. Yes, Doctor. It's uh, really uh, we know the torrential uh, rain, but uh, first time we are hearing the torrential rain of information about the IFS system for last one hour. It's uh, fantastic that uh, IFS integrated. You have integrated uh, all the states in our country. Uh, you started from uh, Kerala, then it went to Tamil Nadu, AP, West Bengal, Karnataka, uh, Jharkhand, Junagadh. Uh, then you you had a uh, 
covered all the aspects of uh, IFS, including nutrient budgeting, water budgeting, microbial population, and that all the things. We, uh, from the question and answer, from the chart plots, how they are interacted and everything, we know the effectiveness of the presentation. Really, thanks, sir. It's a very good informative and a very excellent presentation. Definitely, it will be useful for the uh, KVK system to implement in the model unit as integrated farming system banana based. Uh, I don't want to take much time. Some of the, uh, shall we go for the discussion, madam? Question and answer session discussion. I think uh, Dr. Ravi Sankar can just see question and answer on the answer right. live. There is an icon called the answer live. Okay. You click and you can uh, answer those questions which are all relevant. I request Ravi uh, Sankar to answer those questions. Could you see, Dr. Ravi Sankar, could you see that uh, question and answer box? Uh, chat box, yeah, yeah, I've just... Not, not chat box, not chat box. I'm telling question and answer. Down. No, question and answer box. Yeah, there are yeah, yeah, Ravi, sir, I will update uh, Dr. Ravi Sankar, two or three questions, one by one. Let him explain, no problem, I have not... Uh, no, you can, we... yeah, you can see it's there. Uh, yeah, I, I could able to open, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you can yeah. just click the answer live, then you can go ahead. Answer type. Uh, yeah, the first question is from the Sridhar Krishna Swami Iyengar. Is it so? Is yeah, it yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, the first question is how integrated farming system in sustainable agriculture? Uh, I think I have explained uh, during my presentation how this is sustainable agriculture uh, because it addresses the one health issue which we are talking at the global as well as at the country level. So one health is soil health, human health, lifestyle health, your planet health, it reduces the emission, carbon, as equal, uh, carbon sequestrations are more. And so this way, this is a more sustainable uh, agricultural practice, uh, integrated farming system. I hope uh, this answer is uh, satisfying to the uh, yeah. question. Uh, then prototype means, Rahul, Rahul, somebody asked prototype means. The prototype means it is a designed model. Uh, wherein a particular set of modules are assembled to get the maximum benefits. So, for example, we have um, uh, developed a prototype model of cropping systems, horticulture, dairy, uh, and also the poultry. So, these single components are called as the modules or the components you can call it as. These are assembled in such a way that this gives the maximum net income or maximum sustainability, whatever the, we are aiming. And uh, the, while assembling, we take into consideration of the, the type of component which we are selecting based on the certain principles and also the area allocation, which is very key. We cannot go for allocation just uh, arbitrarily. So you have to look into the input requirement, what is the output expected, how this output can be linked to the other component. So this way, we need to get the uh, this one, assemble all the components to get a maximum benefit. So that is why we call it as a prototype model. The exactly the same model can be replicated in the similar kind of a land holdings or the size. And we have a methodology. We have developed a methodology how to allocate the area, how to select the component for a particular region. So those methodologies can be referred. It is available in our website also. If required, we will share also. So uh, those manual, manual can be referred and you can also develop your prototype model depending upon your uh, form size as well as the, your resources available with you. Uh, the next question is how to improve organic carbon percentage from 0.2 to 2%. See, the organic carbon uh, percentage increase is, uh, it takes a lot of years. But then what we observed, the, if you go on adding the biomass, by recycle the biomass, and also the, uh, enrich the soil microbial biodiversity, your organic carbon can be enhanced. Even uh, we observed that within a period of uh, five years or six years, we, imp uh, we could able to improve the organic carbon by almost 40 to 50 percent but for from 0.2 to 2 percent it is very uh, heavy range it may take uh, several years even more than 30 years or 40 years but 0.2 to uh, 0.2 is a very low 
you, you must be aware that the organic carbon content in soil is categorized into three categories. One is the low, next is medium and high. Low is less than 0.5, medium is 0.5 to 0.75 and more than 0.75 is called as high. Very easily, within a span of six years or five years, the organic carbon can be, organic carbon of your soil can be uh, moved from the low to the medium or medium to the high through these integrated farming systems, if not at the level of 2%. Uh, sir, may I know how the GHG emissions calculated in an integrated farming system? Uh, this is a very good question. Uh, we have applied the, uh, we have used the IPCC tier 2 coefficients. Uh, you know, uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, they have given a coefficients for the various management practices or various cost components of the agriculture. So by using those coefficients, by using those coefficients, we have developed a Excel tool, Excel tool, very user-friendly Excel tool. Just we have to put the, all the input parameters, how much of fertilizer I am applying, how much of seed I am applying, how many plants are there, what is the duration of that crop. All those parameters are, if you are given input into the Excel sheet, then it gives the component-wise uh, emission component wise sink as well as the total balance everything it gives from that uh, you can get from the excel tool and it is used based on the it is uh, the excel tool is designed based on the ip uh, ipcc tier 2 methodology then uh, can we take up intercropping of sugarcane or turmeric in banana orchard yes but turmeric in banana is a very common practice. Many of the farmers are also undertaking because banana, turmeric also requires a shade, shade loving crop. So it can be very well taken. But sugar can, of course, because there is a height difference is not much of height difference is there. So there may there will be a competition during the maximum growth period. So sugar can as a sugar can as a intercrop is not uh, advisable. But as a boundary crop, this can be sugar can can be taken up. Then, earthworm. Is pseudo stem good feed for earthworm? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, pseudo stem good feed for earthworm? Yes, yes, certainly. You have to chop it, but it has to be mixed with that of the uh, your farmyard manure or the cow dung in a proper ratio. More amount of almost 70 to 80 percent of the cow dung uh, needs to be added, and then uh, the pseudo stem needs to be chopped and then mixed with that. This one, then it can be a, it can make a good uh, compost from that. Yes. Then what is impact period? Yeah, what is impact period means in one slide which I have shown, which we have done in the farmers' field. Uh, what we do in the on-farm research program, we take up the trial for a five years period. During the five years of development of integrated farming system, we support the farmers. We support the farmers with the physical and technical inputs for the initial three years. All kind of interventions, the low cost interventions which I have listed for the Patanam data district, like suckers, banana suckers, then some kind of yeah, vermicompost paint or the asola paint. So this type of low cost physical input as well as the technical inputs are given for the initial three years period. And in the during the impact period, we don't give any kind of uh, inputs, uh, neither the technical input nor the physical input. We simply observe, we, we simply visit the farmers, simply observe what whether he is discontinuing this particular model or particular management package, or he is continuing, or if he is partially modifying the things. So this way, uh, we are observing during the impact period, what are all the discontinuation? What are all the continuation? What is the benefit he is accruing without any kind of a sub support to the farmers, be it a physical support or the technical support to the farmers? This year in Nagaland, uh, someone has developed a model in high altitude, uh, okay, this is not... Uh, this is only a suggestion. Yeah, yeah, please. Another is uh, banana soybean duration are different. Of the harvest of soybean, one next crop in same banana field. Can we go relay cropping like that? 
yeah yeah this can be grown uh, there is because uh, this uh, soybean is a short duration crop and uh, any pulse suitable for that particular season rabi season like chickpea any kind of crops can be taken up in those uh, areas where i have shown that is from the kolapur region normally they take up only the one type of uh, intercrop especially during the uh, karif season or the summer season only rabi season they don't go for the intercropping mainly due to the soil temperature related issues because the soil temperature goes down drastically in these regions and that affects the nutrient availability to the crops once we grow more and more crops during the rabi season especially in the heavy feeding crop like banana then this affects the yield of the both the crops yeah another important question uh, is it possible to integrate fish uh, in banana field where farmers are using trenches for irrigation in some parts of tamil nadu this is wetland cultivation where uh, trenches will be there and the water will be there can we grow fish uh, fish farm yeah, certainly, certainly it can be grown i have given in the banana based ifs model uh, which i have explained in the beginning for the kerala but only thing is that you have to sure you have to be sure that uh, that uh, you have to go for yeah lining of those ponds so that any this one and also you have to prepare a medium over the above that okay. medium means for um, uh, you have to put a soil or kind of a phytoplankton and the zooplanktons which are developing in those ponds for as which act as a fish feed fish feed for the uh, fish which are introduced especially uh, which uh, gift i have told uh, that genetically improved uh, this uh, fish tilapia and also the pearl spot these are all the very shallow water uh, species so this can be uh, very easily integrated with the systems can we include beekeeping as one of the component in banana based ifs oh sure sure this can be this is very possible and we in certain models we have uh, apiary also and uh, because uh, uh, because ifs models are having the diversity of the crops uh, including the flower crops and all the other components there is the availability of the flowers throughout the year so bees will not uh, travel much distance they need not travel distance so you are you can very easily include the apiary component but only thing is that you should see that in your ifs model throughout the year seasonal flower crops are grown within the model oh uh, then is it possible to convert banana based leaf i uh, means leaf based into any by products i think that ravi shankar already told that uh, already covered uh, vermi compost vermi compost can be prepared and uh, fish culture i think uh, any subsidy provided by the government for ifs uh, yes 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 uh, I, ifs subsidy is uh, directly it is not available but uh, there are three four schemes are available which i would like to share you can take the benefits from those schemes one is the rain fed farming systems program is there under the government of india under nmsa national mission on sustainable agriculture from that scheme uh, the you you can get all kind of uh, help for establishing the infrastructure say for example you have to develop the land modify the land to, to the, fit the all the your modules like land configuration broadbed furrow system ridges and furrow system then fish component so this type of uh, land uh, configuration based infrastructure development you can get from the rain fed farming system program and uh, at the local level the department officials can converge the scheme funding like you have got a separate separate schemes horticulture separate schemes are there crop component separate schemes are there and for gov matlab uh, livestock component fisheries there is a separate components are there so at the local agricultural district level officers level so they can converge the funding from the different uh, sources and they can help the ifs farmers but right now uh, the only scheme which is available is rain fed farming system program but in tamil nadu government and also the kerala government state government schemes are available for the development of the ifs and during the last 2 3 years the government of tamil nadu has established the ifs models in more than 10000 farmers field and around 1 lakh they have provided to the each of each of the farmers for establishing the infrastructure so government of tamil nadu is having the scheme for the this one uh, another another question is in ifs demonstrated in andhra pradesh the paddy crop in fish pond uh, is is that uh, floating cultivation technique or something else can you explain uh, dr sofia is asking yeah yeah yeah, yeah just uh, i would like to clarify uh, this is uh, not a floating uh, this one 
because rice is a basic food for those people you cannot avoid the uh, not avoid, means we should not uh, you have to grow the rice crop in the model so what we did was the rice crop grown in those regions are highly subjected to the flooding because west godavari district very often flood occurs and many times the crop gets completely submerged and they, because of that their yield goes down so what we designed was that we created a pond in which the middle of the pond portion is kept as such a little uh, as such at the ground level and all the corners of the pond is made into the deeper layers almost more than 3 to 4 meters of depth so whenever there is a heavy rainfall is there the all the water goes down to the uh, the sunken area in the pond and there is not much of water logging in the uh, paddy area and there is a particular type of varieties are available deep water rice varieties are available and those varieties are grown in that particular area mainly to meet the family requirement of the rice another uh, the i think this question we cannot answer the both uh, north india farmers they grow rice wheat so this is sake of investment i think it's a little bit uh, the answer and there is uh, when do you have made vermicompost in alle of uh, banana whether you noticed any increase in pest and disease attack okay no we have not this was done at our own station itself uh, because three four months period where the climatic conditions was suitable for the preparation of the vermicompost uh, from the april to i think february to may month we did that particular experiment we did not uh, see any uh, increase in the pest and disease incidents due to the integration of the mushroom or due to the uh, vermicompost in the banana plantation and with reference to the crop diversification in the northern india uh, i would like to state that diversification is possible once it goes in the mass movement mainly in northern india if you see the main problem is the it is not that farmers are not willing to the, do the go for the diversification the main issue is that it is the uh, damage of crops due to the wild animals wild boar wild monkeys there are a lot of menace is there so if one farmer goes for a new crop or a particular crop then your his entire crop gets uh, damaged that is why many of the farmers in this uh, here in especially in our belt they go for sugar cane crop which is less damaged by the due to the wild animals and if the crop diversification has to be taken up or ifs to be taken up this has to be taken as a mass movement then only it will be successful okay uh, the regarding the banana jam and banana sauce it is not available in market uh, see, we have prepared as a experimental purpose we uh, we have prepared at our institute we are in the process of standardizing and also the commercializing that yes yes doctor sir Shall we, shall we close the question and answer session, or otherwise shall we? Yeah? Sir, one important question, another one question by participant. Uh, if there is any negative interaction between the components of the IFR, how we can reduce the negative uh, interaction? That's one question from the participant. Yeah, uh, this is again a very good uh, scientific question. In fact. uh mainly if you see the negative interaction happens uh, once you are not optimizing the uh the type of component and also the area or resource allocated to that particular component in the start itself while planning itself based on the scientific principles if you select a particular component and also the allocate the resource or the resource in terms of uh, area allocation or in terms of size of the components then the negative interactions uh, are limited It means it can be reduced significantly then even the ifs is a dynamic system it is not a fixed uh, kind of a system it is a highly dynamic system and if, even if one component found it is significantly reducing the other component or it is not uh, fitting well then certainly you can have a option to fit a new module into that system within the established practices okay, okay. dr katpaham you can uh, take yes. i think the yeah you can uh. Uh, yeah madam shall we uh, i think lot of questions he answered almost uh, all the major questions uh, uh, so it covered all the aspects of uh, question is concerned uh, madam shall we go for the final 
director can uh, give her remarks before yeah. the giving a uh, uh, vote of thanks uh, for the session. Yes. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, I was listening to him and uh, Ananda, though I wanted to look at some file, a little bit here and there, but uh, your presentation and the information, the vast information, useful information, literally made me not to uh, move my attention from, your, from the screen. Excellent information, very well covered, very systematically you covered state by state and uh, uh, different modules which can be incorporated. Uh, I am very happy. Uh, uh, excellent presentation. I am sure all the participants would have been uh, benefited. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Uh, uh, excellent presentation. Thank you, Madam. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Madam, for your uh, wonderful comment. I uh, mean, remarks about this presentation. Thank you very much, Madam. I think now we can adapt uh, silver answers. We can go for the final uh, what up thanks. I'm going. Huh? So uh, the. What should be thank? Actually, this is a very good presentation, Dr. Sir. We are uh, coming into the final what of thanks, uh, formal what of thanks session. I thank uh, first and foremost our director, ICR NRCV, for uh, continuous and uh, constant uh, motivation as well as the uh, inspiration to take up the event for uh, during the 75 year of Indian uh, independence celebration as a part of uh, that program. I uh, really thank you very much, Madam. Uh, then our uh, another one uh, co-convener, our doctor, our Selvarajan and team. Really, that uh, that team they are making a lot of efforts to the for the online Zoom meeting and arrangement and everything. Thank you for our uh, PMEC in charge, uh, sir, uh, doctor Selvarajan, sir. Uh, then I extend my sincere thanks to other our senior uh, uh, colleagues uh, in uh, ICR NRCB and uh, my friends all technical officer, supporting staff, and other members of I, I, admin uh, and other members of ICR NRCB. My sincere thanks goes to uh, next to that. I have to mention the, uh, my sincere thanks to director Atari, Bengaluru Zone. Uh, really, he made a wonderful arrangement to uh, circulate all this information to all the KVK, 74 KVKs in the zone 11 Bangalore uh, Atari. So all almost all majority of the SMS scientists, they had participated in the um, uh, presentation. Really, it's a very supporting. The real uh, research extension and farmer linkage has, has been uh, taking up in this uh, event. Uh, really, thank you, sir, for your constant motivation. Uh, then my sincere thanks to all professors of uh, different universities I, I have to stay i have to say just i am giving one information they had circulated and they encourage all the students to participate students scholar and msc and phd scholar to uh, to participate in the uh, particular program that's why within a uh, very uh, short uh, period we could get the thousand uh, registered participants, almost our uh, 500 target has been over. Really, that different students from Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, uh, Madurai Agriculture University, uh, then uh, Horticulture College from Tiruchi, uh, Horticulture College from um, uh, Periyagulam, then different students and uh, scholars, they had uh, even students from uh, Kashmir, E Kashmir University, they had also registered for this program uh, from Jammu and Kashmir. That is one of the uh, means great Greatest, uh, that's so the greatest uh, participants of this event. Uh, my sincere thanks to uh, ASRP participants also. They had also UP, Bihar, they, ha uh, they had also registered for the event. Uh, then all the state department people, they had also registered for the event. So I have my sincere thanks to goes to all the participants. Uh, then state department. Then as a uh, not only student researcher and KVK person, then other uh, businessmen and other stakeholders also registered in the event. So I thank all the participants for the wonderful participation and nice combination. Once again, I thank all my participants as well as the stakeholders in the program. And almost finally, I have to thank speaker for a wonderful presentation. Uh, for last uh, one week, I am following him. Uh, whatever I am asking information, he used to give the information, PowerPoint slate about his biodata and everything. Really, uh, sir, thank our, on behalf of our director, ICR NRCB, uh, NRCB uh, our sincere thanks to you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.